So moving on to kind of strategy. So how are we going to, to kind of create or manifest that vision? So in terms of strategy, there's a good quote here from Book Mr. Bookminster Fuller, which I'm sure most of you have, have heard or seen this quote before. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So that's what we're focused on. Everything that we're doing, the work, the projects, it's all about creating the new. We call them the alternative systems and services because they are going to be um, as an alternative to the current and old systems but they are new um, and that's all our energy is going into these these new systems um, and as the quote suggest suggests here then it won't say the building strength it creates um, as it makes the, the the old or existing model models obsolete but how are we going to do this then in terms of the strategy? So this is where the, the bigger project comes in, which is called One Community Cooperatives. So this is a project that, you know, um, me and uh, Loretta, who's the other co-founder uh, of this work, you know, we've, we've been working on this now for six years, maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, we were talking to people about needing to create the alternative systems and services back then, you know, four years, five years ago. And, you know, not a lot of people really were um, wanting to put their time and energy in, energy into this, this, these sorts of projects. But, you know, since two, the beginning of 2020, since obviously the COVID narrative kind of um, came in, it's, um, there's a lot more people now who are energized and focused and, and want to create alternative systems and services. So this is the strategy, one community cooperative, which is a family of interconnected, not for profit co-ops. So this is a, an ecosystem of people owned enterprises and they offer all essential products and services that we need. So it's serving the community needs, but also what, what the communities want as well. So these are enterprises that can be created to, to facilitate that. Um, and again, everything's built upon natural law and the, the values of, of compassion. Um, so each co-op, which is part of this family, is, is decentralized in power. Um, so each co-op has its own members um, and local people who own that organization. Um, but the, the co-op is part of the, of the, the bigger project or the family um, or network and so we, we share you know a similar vision and, and strategy of what we want to achieve but I'm going to go I'm, we're going to go into this more with other presentations but um, you know there's a lot which one community co-ops will, 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 will support local enterprises with in terms of access to shared services anything from fundraising and sales and marketing and website creation everything like that but what One Community Cooperatives is all about using the power of business. Um, and, and that's a, a proven and efficient way to organize. That's what, what, that's what it is. And, um, you know, it's about making real change happen quickly. So this is where we're using business and, and economics uh, to make the changes that we need to create that infrastructure, but to do it as quickly as possible. So... One community cooperatives, it's operating in the, the current systems to build the new. So that's our, that's our strategy. So we're operating within you know, the current legal systems and financial systems with the banking and using fiat currency, accessing that particular capital. Um, and so we're, we're using those current systems, but obviously our what, what, we're, what we're doing is, is, is building and creating the, the new systems and services. So in terms of what we're, what we're focused on, it's, it's the solutions, um, which everyone will agree with and support, um, well, most people anyway. So, so interconnected local economies, like, 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 like I've touched on, again, it's all about people powered and owned and community resilience, um, being resilient to any sort of crisis, uh, and, and whether that's 
the economic crisis which we're going through now and um to be honest it's I, from from our perspective it's more of an economic collapse uh, as we um move out of this old or current financial economic systems um into the new and you know the, the centralized forces if you want to if you want to call it that have their solutions all ready to go um so you know what we're helping to create is is that alternative but in terms of solutions everything we talk about is you know it's regeneration it's personal health um improvement it's the regeneration of nature and ecosystems and it's all about you know these are the solutions that it ticks every boxes for anyone really when it, it it will appeal to um to everyone so whether that's the mainstream you know there's a lot of people who, who want to help our projects and our work who are, who are more more what you'd say mainstream in thinking who are focused on and believe in what we're doing which is fantastic and with there's a lot of people as well as part of a part of this part of this project who are more what you'd say alternative in thinking um and again that they, these are the solutions that we all need to focus on so rather than going into um certain narratives or maybe going into a bigger picture of of, of maybe what's going on currently um we're really focused on inclusion and, and connection and, and collaboration so not separation so all these different sorts of narratives um creates separation which is not what we want um and again in terms of the solutions it's it's all about well-known business models which we're using not-for-profit business model which i'll talk about in a second and again cooperatives and that that sort of ownership model um so in terms of ownership model i'm you know i'm sure everyone's or most people have know of the the, the co-op model um in terms of members of a co-op and every member is an owner so this this creates real community and, and people ownership of organizations um we're a big believer in what's called a, a multi-stakeholder co-op model which means anyone involved in that co-op whether it's a a worker um, a consumer it could be a producer it could be an investor it could be a volunteer whoever it, whoever it is is an owner um, and that's where you know that's we're a big believer of that and there's there's many benefits in terms of using the the, the co-op model um you know just some of them is lower turnover of staff as you can imagine the people working are owners and so that they, 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 they've got a lot of passion involved in that there's higher productivity you know as you as you'd expect people work harder for these sorts of organizations and because of that there's higher profits you know there's been there's been studies and i've read i've read a lot of these studies you know on average 8.5 percent higher but you know some of these co-ops are, are much higher profits than um maybe traditional capitalistic organizations and they're much more resilient you know less redundancies less bankruptcy and that's these are just facts um and again they're resilient to to, to what's going on in in the market really um and a, a big one for people maybe to look at when you've got more time and um it's the it's a, a model i came across probably about maybe about six years ago now called mondragon um cooperatives in spain and in the basque region of spain so they're a, a family of, of worker co-ops 96 worker co-ops so up to eighty thousand workers you know huge in terms of revenue they're generating 10 billion pounds a year they're, they're huge and they're, they're just a family of of of, of worker co-ops um another uh big part of the, the kind of models that we we um we're a big believers in is the not-for-profit business model or, or you know social enterprises so the, the legal purpose of these um of this, this particular type of organization and it's very very clear is it's to benefit the people whether it's you know communities and, and society in general and it's to benefit environment or, or or nature um so and that 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 is the purpose of of the organization that's why it exists so for-profit um businesses within their legal purpose 
it's all about financial gain. It's you know maximizing profit, and that's what those entities, those legal entities, are focused on. Um, and just to really, because um, a number of people ask the question in terms of, and if you're not for profit, how do you make money? How do you pay people? Or whatever. There is a difference between non-profit organisations and not for profit businesses. So non-profit, like a charity, um, or, or foundations, or, or whatever it might be. Um, they're, they're reliant on donations, reliant on governments and, and et cetera. They basically, um, you know, like, like you know, as I said, the charities, they, they mop up the mess of the, the current systems. That's what, they, that's what they, 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 they are and they do. Um, not for profit, businesses are different. They, um, they focus on creating and generating revenue. They're, they're, they're like a for profit business as in, in terms of strategy, in terms of how, it's fu how it functions, in terms of roles, in terms of sales revenue, et cetera. And they operate and they generate what's called a financial surplus. So profit, basically, but you know, within the not-for-profit world, it's financial surplus. So people within not-for-profit organizations, people who work for it, they typically get paid more um, with, within those organizations. And, you know, the financial surplus goes back into the, the project for better systems, better benefits, better, you know, expand it in different areas. Um, so that's how they operate. But the, there are non-profit benefits. So as, an, as, a, as a, a, you know, a not-for-profit business, you can still got access to grants. You know, we were started with a £25,000 grant from 7 Trent, which is our water provider. You know, donations, etc., because people believe in the mission. Volunteers, again, you know, we, we're volunteer run, which I'll go into in a second, but it's that people believe in the mission of it. Uh, and it's lots and lots of support for these sorts of mission driven businesses. So they're all the kind of nonprofit benefits, but the, the for profit kind of benefits in terms of efficiency and productivity and how they're set up, you know, they're set up to maximize profits so, and they're very, very good at doing that. So the not-for-profit businesses or, or social enterprises, which is what Pharmacy Co-op is, and the other projects which we'll talk about are as well, they are not-for-profit social enterprises. So they've got the benefits of, of everything I've just been talking about. The best, what I would say, the best of both worlds. Um, so in terms of one community cooperatives and the, the, the main area of, of focus for this for this project is what we, what we call foundational needs human foundational needs and these are the these are the prior priorities which i'll talk through but there's, there's more to come obviously but um this is what we're focused on food is a big one um agro ecological growing um you know, nature friendly farming is another or regenerative um, farming is another way of doing it. So, um, so yeah, food in terms of growing, uh, in terms of, of, of production, um, uh, making um, local organic food accessible, secure local economic systems is a is a big focus for us, which I'll talk about um, in more detail shortly. So that's again local production, secure access, uh, a community hub model, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, and a secure and alternative way of exchange. Um, and again, that's another project which we've been working on. Well, another area of focus for, for us is, is, is logistics. So I know a lot of people are focused on local food production, local systems and everything like that, which is obviously very, very important, which again, what we're, we're heavily involved in. But the logistical infrastructure of moving things around locally from producers, from farms, where, how does it get to where it needs to go and how is it moved around? How is it connected regionally? Because we can't produce everything locally at the moment. And then how it's connected nationally within infrastructure. Um, you know, and then the IT infrastructure, which kind of supports that particular kind of operation. So logistics is hugely important, which is, again, a big focus for us. Health and well-being. Um, you know, the last two and a half years has really highlighted a lot for, for, for people. But, um, you know, we've personally been involved in, you know, health and well-being and, and, and educating and training ourselves within more natural health for, for, for many years now. 
you know it's it's one of the reasons why pharmacy co-op was what was created and in terms of natural health care it's it's all about prevention in particular but you know regeneration and healing um you know the human body can regenerate and heal anything really um so you know we're focused on production of of natural uh, medicines and um uh, and and also other kind of alternatives to do with with healthcare um housing a big focus for for us as, as a as a project um, which i'll talk about shortly and how that's linked to energy um, community energy and, and, and water and water management and self-sufficiency and and education which is something we've not really spoken about um that much because it's part of our priorities but it's um you know we've, we've been focusing more on, on food and um logistical infrastructure up to now but um education's 